One of the leading stories coming out of China over the past 12 months has been Jack Ma, Alibaba, and the financial powerhouse of the Ant Group. The Ant Group was preparing to make history last November with a record-setting IPO valuing the company at over 300 billion US dollars. However, days before the grand event, Chinese regulators came in and suspended the company, blocking its IPO and sending shockwaves throughout Wall Street and markets throughout the world. In the months following the failed IPO, many people speculated that China's government was becoming anti-capitalist and overly cautious. What about Jack Ma? Was China's government looking to make an example out of China's richest man? Or did China's government have legitimate concerns about exposing themselves to too much financial risk? Now to answer these questions and to give us a better insight, I'm welcoming back into the studio Richard Turin, author of the book Cashless. And many of you will remember Richard from episode six of Real Talk China, where the two of us sat down to discuss everything you need to know about China's digital currency. In today's episode, Richard and I will answer the following three questions. What is Ant Group and why is it so important? What is the real reason that the IPO was stopped? And what is the future of the Ant Group in China? We've got a lot to discuss. Let's jump into the studio. If, for somebody that doesn't know anything about Ant Group, what is Ant Group and why is it so big and you know such an amazing company? Ant Group is a tremendous company because it is the really the, the birth or the inventor of our modern fintech okay. or fintech for financial technology. So Ant Group is a subsidiary owned company of Alibaba. Okay. Or Alibaba is the major shareholder. I have to yeah. really be careful about how I refer to them. So basically Alibaba is comparable to Amazon. They sell stuff online. They do a lot more than that, but that's the basic platform and or Ant Group inside of it has something called Alipay, which is the payment system. So you've got essentially an Amazon, and then attached to that Amazon, you've got what is, for practical purposes, a bank, or with all full cash transfer, banking, investment, all of these different services. So it's a breakthrough in how we use money and how we manage our money, because you can basically go to the Alipay site you can buy insurance, you can invest your money, you can spend your money, um, you can buy stocks. Anything that you want to do is available on a singular platform. And that's really, uh, it's really the first in the world to bring or embed payment and finance all into one integrated platform. We don't have that. Just imagine Amazon with your bank with your investment company, with your insurance company, boom, all rolled into one place. It's, yeah. uh, so it's a really dramatic transformational uh, app, yeah. the company. Fantastic. And tell us a little bit more about what was leading up to the IPO. Like I mentioned earlier, it was scheduled to be one of the largest IPOs. And then I think what happened really was, you know, Jack Ma gave a speech. I, I think that he said a few things that were pretty controversial, maybe a little bit too progressive. And I think that really raised some speculation, you know, certainly for people within the banking industry in China, certainly the government of China. Tell us a little bit about this decision to pull the IPO and kind of what, what's been happening these past few months as it has been restructuring. I know there's a lot of speculation. A lot of people aren't really clear about this. So I'd like somebody to come out and really clear the record and, and tell it to us like it is. There is a tremendous amount of hysteria. And this is a news piece from Newsweek that I just think is great because it shows Jack, it says Jack Ma goes missing, video predicting he will die or go to jail surfaces. So basically, this is the kind of sensationalism that we got with the cancellation of the Ant IPO. There is a tremendous amount of speculation about where Jack Ma is. And the answer is he's fine. And he is still uh, involved with Ant. He has a CEO of Ant who's doing most of the heavy lifting, but he's fine. Yeah. So the, the rumors predicting his jail being put to jail or put to death are insane. But that's, but that's, that's sort of where we are. Ant IP wanted to IPO itself as a standalone company in both the Shanghai market and the Hong Kong market. It won approvals from regulators to do so. It approved 
approval, it got approval from one set of regulators to do so. A couple of days or a couple of nights before the actual IPO launch, the IPO was canceled. The facile and common reason for this was that Jack Ma went to Shanghai where there was a large meeting and before in front of the regulators, he said some stuff that was not perhaps received well by the regulators. Now, you have two choices right now. You can either say Jack Ma said this, these things because he knew that the cancellation was coming because he's a pretty connected guy. It's hard to imagine that he right. wouldn't know what was going on. Or that Jack Ma said these things because he really wanted to upset the regulators. You pick A or B. Right. And in my view, I see Jack Ma as a very connected person. I don't think that he was intentionally trying to upset regulators a couple of days before his big IPO. Right. I think he knew what was happening. And that was it was a cry to say, please don't shut me down because we are living in a new world. Right. You can pick. The Western media has picked very careful has picked the second option, which is to say he he basically wanted to be controversial days before and was okay with upsetting them, which I think is highly unlikely on further review. So we then get closer on to the IPO. Okay, so why did regulators close down an IPO? To explain properly, you have to look back into China's history. China's history, not so far ago, 2016 and 17, had a crisis. It was equivalent to the global financial crisis that we had in the U.S., Western markets in the U.S., where we had mortgage-backed securities, people unable to pay their mortgages, um, too many loans, too yeah. much credit, okay? And in 2008, we had the, we kicked off the global financial credit crisis. In China in 2015 and 16, we had the peer-to-peer -peer loan scandal, mm -hmm. which was loans from one person to another with, with the internet company as an intermediary, and large amounts of loan volumes were created. People stole a tremendous amount of money. About $120 billion went missing. Wow. Most of the blame for this was put on to the financial regulators of the PBOC and the um, and the and the, the and the banking regulator. Right. So most people in the West don't know much about this. Right. But this was going on all the way up to 2016 and 17. It was being worked out. So what you've got is Ant. Ant wants to IPO. The major part of Ant's business happens to be credit creation. So when Ant started its IPO, it came out with a valuation of around $200 billion. The regulators looked at it and they said, okay, you know, that's possible. Now, as time went on, the IPO valuation got bigger and bigger and bigger, all the way up to around $320 billion. Think about it. If you're worth $200 billion, you have yeah. to produce so much revenue to justify that, rev right. that valuation, right? If somebody says you're suddenly worth $320 billion, yeah. you also have to produce revenue. Well, right. How can Ant produce that revenue? There was only one way, and that was through increased credit creation. Right. PBOC is saying, look, we approved you at one valuation. Now you've gone through the roof or to the moon. Right. And we are very concerned that the amount of credit you would have to create to justify this valuation would result in a credit bubble for China. So I understand that that's perhaps a little complicated, but you have to go back to see peer-to-peer -peer loan as a credit bubble that cost tremendous amounts of money. So there were suicides. It was societally destabilizing for China. Yeah. Now the same regulators, because it was only four years ago, are looking at Ant and they're saying, my God, this is another credit bubble in the making. Yeah. So for them, they made the very hard decision to say, we would rather cancel this IPO, which was tremendously difficult for, for China. It was a national hero. 
yeah. it was in some ways a good thing for channel we were going to we're going to cancel this and we're going to cancel it because we do not want another credit bubble that could potentially blow up on us like the p2p loan scandal did what people are missing and what many in the West miss are it's these same regulators who were around for the P2P loan who are were essentially blamed for that crisis. And in my book, I actually cover why they actually made a lot of good decisions. They were yeah. analog re regulators forced to work at digital speed. Their right. decisions were fine. Just the speed was all wrong. Yeah, yeah. Makes so they sense. weren't bad guys. But now they're looking at this new IPO and they're saying, this is another potential credit bubble in the making and we don't want it to happen. And that's essentially the story of an IPO um, that is not the facile answer that says, oh, he got them mad and they yeah. canceled his IPO. Well, I, think, you know, I think that's really interesting, Richard, because this is why I wanted to get you back on the show to share this perspective because – a lot of times Western media, they don't understand as well, you know, what is going on in China. And so a lot of it is speculation. You can look at a title like that, you're going to get clicks, right? That, that, that is a news title that has been scripted in order to get people to click on that. And of course, bad news sells with China, right? So immediately we're jumping to conclusions. Oh, you know, Jack Ma's in prison. You know, he's, you know, going to wind up dead. China is going to just make an example out of this billionaire. You know, Jack Ma is a national hero, like you said. He's also, you know, the most the richest man in China. Amazing, an amazing story, an amazing, you know, person for China. What he's done, obviously, with Alibaba, that has really helped so many people within China. And, and you know, one of the things that I mentioned is poverty alleviation is a really big mission of China's government. Alipay, you know, WeChat Pay, these vehicles, you know, are very big cogs in that system in order to be able to, you know, relieve that poverty. I have not heard a Western media report talk about peer-to-peer -peer loans just four years ago. And the fact that, again, this is just China's government acting rationally and just, you know, you're looking at a situation, look, this could potentially be another disaster that, oh, guess what? That happened four years ago. You know, it's, it's still fresh on the minds. Let's take a moment. Let's reanalyze this. And I agree with you as well. I mean, Jack Ma is one of the most connected men in China. I mean, he knew what was going on. And, and, and again, I mean, he's still working with China's government behind the scenes right now, obviously restructuring Ant and getting it ready when it does IPO again. I wish I had a dollar for every news article that I read that said that Ant Group was going to be disassembled destroyed or otherwise blown up right, right. by the regulator. So look, Ant is a tremendously systematic, a systemically important company within China. Yeah. It is handles 53% of all mobile payments within the country. Mobile payments represent something like 80, 87, whatever percent of the payment stream. So it's, it's, it's huge. It's yeah. not, a little fintech. You have to understand right. that this is a very important company. Their yeah. work in uh, financial inclusion is been praised by the UN. It has been absolutely critical for China's digital transformation as a country and as a society. Ant is restructuring to have what's called a financial holding company. And why? Let's get into why. A financial holding company is essentially a bank-like entity Okay. That is controlled under bank regulations. Gotcha. Okay. So before, under the prior structure, Ant as a company could basically provide the underwriting services for loans. So let, ready? Let's just say I want to borrow money. You are a bank. And Ant goes in between and says, I will underwrite, make the decision for how much you should borrow and what rate you should right. get paid. And I will take a commission for doing this, but I, Ant, take no risk in the loan. You can see where there's some red flags there, of course. I mean, So you can see where now, when Ant started doing this business, it was a small company. This was all new. Fine. Right. This is now systemically important to China. There are thousands of internet loan companies similar to Ant. Not all of them were so well managed. Not all of them had good risk control like Ant. So what you do for one 
you must do for all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you continue to let in underwrite credit without what we call skin in the game, meaning right. a percentage of the loan, which if you don't pay, I ain't lose money, right? So that's fundamentally what's behind the transfer of Ant's loan operations into this financial holding company. Yeah. Ant will not be able to hit the same profit or returns with the holding company because it must take positions in these loans. It has to reserve a greater amount, therefore has to deploy, it has less capital to deploy if it's holding capital as reserve, right? Correct. So that's nothing evil, it's not bad. It makes the financial system overall safer. These are good things considering that Ant is this tremendously important company within China. So where does this leave Ant? It leaves Ant with a, now it will have a financial holding company. It will have a reduced re profitability or revenue forecast going forward, but it will be a fabulously important and fabulously creative company going forward. This is not a disaster for Ant. It's significant. I won't make light of that. And I will go as far as to say that we all wish that the regulators had researching or some who are more, more proactive with Ant so that they would have stopped the IPO certainly before, a couple of days before. I would, right. the Timing was horrible. I, yeah. And the, 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 P, the PBOC acknowledges that. Ant will thrive as a company. So the constant drone of news reports saying that, well, Ant is going to be broken up. Ant is going to be disaster. Ant will be disrupted by central bank digital currency. All of these very negative news reports sort of don't get how systemically important Ant is. Correct. And how it is in everyone's best interest, including the PBOC and the central government, to have a happy, thriving, and otherwise profitable ant, okay? That's so right. they're not going to, quote, kill the goose that laid the golden egg. They yeah. will perhaps put it in a pen, give it some regulations, and look at it, regulate it as the systemically important institution that it is. So that's, that's the new world. And Ant is doing everything in its power to live up to regulators' expectations. It's a new world, but it's not a, there's no disaster to be seen here. Everybody, check out Richard's book. It's called Cashless. It talks about this new digital world moving forward fascinating book. I've been reading it over the past week. And Richard, thank you again for spending some time with me here on YouTube. And thank you everybody for uh, your watching this video. Cyrus, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Now, everybody, as we conclude today's video, I want to share with you some more important updates that just came out a few days ago. On June 3rd, 2021, the Wall Street Journal published this article, and to change how it makes loans with a new consumer finance company. In this article published on June 4th, Ant Group's consumer lending unit set to start operations. This is a recent post from Richard Turin on LinkedIn where he states, great news for Ant Group as its consumer finance company is approved. It can get back to business reorganizing and has certainty to its future. The new company, Chongqing Ant Consumer Finance Company will hold the loan and be 50% owned by Ant with six other partners holding the rest. Ant's partners, who participated in the original loan companies, will undoubtedly be delighted with the development as they now have a stake in a new nationally approved entity. Ant will remain a tech company at heart, but will now have an incredible new opportunity to go into areas of finance and banking that were off limits to it before. So again, this is why I always preach on this channel that you must connect with people that are on the ground in China and have real life experience and are doing business inside the country. Sometimes when you read mainstream media, it's all doom and gloom for the future of China. But again, when you take time to really analyze the entire situation behind the Ant Group, why this IPO was stopped, you can notice that China's government is systematically thinking about what is the best plan, not only for the country, but for the citizens and for everybody involved in the process. I'm extremely bullish on Jack Ma, Alibaba, and the Ant Group, and I know all of them will play a very vital role in the future of China's 
financial success. Everybody, I wanna thank you for making it to this point in the video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing all of you in a future video right here on YouTube. Thank you.